We're about to usher in 2016, but 2015 was a busy year for us. Uh, and Nestor, you had the number 10 story of the year, uh, the military buildup. Yes, um, the record of decision was signed back in August, uh, and that is seen as the catalyst for this long awaited $8.7 billion uh, military buildup to be funded by the uh, governments of the United States and of Japan, of course. And uh, it's reached the highest levels um, of uh, leadership. Uh, President uh, Obama and um, Prime Minister Abe of Japan met in Washington to discuss. Um, the matter specifically, uh, uh, Prime Minister Abe sent um, his chief cabinet secretary to Guam to see for his own eyes uh, what was going on. So yeah, the record of decision was definitely one of the biggest um, news uh, um, developments for the military buildup. Okay, so uh, number nine story is about uh, raises for uh, island leaders, and last year was all about uh, they were implemented. This year was all about the public sentiment and efforts to repeal these raises. And as we saw in the story, um, two bills were introduced to try to repeal them: one for senators, one for everyone. They both fell. So, um, you know, as we saw during the public hearing, an over six-hour public hearing, even the governor showed up. A lot of people, a lot of the cabinet members testified in favor of it. Even the governor was all about parity and this way scale. A lot of the public though were against it saying that um, you know there's other issues other areas that need to be funded so like the Gomanians for fair government group uh, once the decision came out that both bills, bills felt they issued a release saying that um, they, obviously, they sent an obvious message to the the island leaders sent an obvious message to the voters of Guam and with next year's upcoming election that they'll obviously decide based on who voted what and that's probably gonna be another top story Ooh, before yeah. 2016 yeah. the story doesn't end here <laughs> John, what about you? Um, tell us what's the latest, uh, what's the outcome of the Yu Hua Huan? Well, um, this was a big uh, story, you know, and it just so happened it started out um, the new year, um, 2015. And um, basically we had a, a video um, sent to us, a surveillance video of a woman, 44-year-old um, uh, Yu Hua Huan, um, going up to 10-month-old um, baby uh, Alexia Esser and punching her. Um, and so that when we posted that, because they were, you know, they were trying to search for her, uh, for Han at the time. I mean, it went, it was shared, and I think within 24 hours of KOAM posting that video, uh, they had apprehended um, Han. You emailed her, right? You emailed the family asking uh, about the video. I remember yes. that because you and I were texting. Did you see that video? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it was, it was, it was, you know, it was crazy. And then just to see the the response, the social mm -hmm. response, everyone just sharing it, and um, the, the the you know the thing with it is that it inspired legislation uh, from Senator Dennis Rodriguez Jr. Um, just kind of strengthening and the need to put in place um, more uh, stricter, I guess, guidelines for those with um, you know uh, mental mental. Uh, yeah. This story took place on the first day of 2015, perhaps foreshadowing what a year we'd see in terms of the shocking acts of violence in the community, the technology that captured the acts, and the kind-hearted citizens that stepped in to help. It was an act that most of us on Guam, where respect for someone's family is perhaps our highest virtue, simply couldn't believe. The 44-year-old Yu Hua Han was found with the history of being accused of attacking a child in a public place. In 2009, she was accused of wielding a knife and attacking and stabbing a baby and her father at Lone Star Steakhouse in Tumuning. A psychiatric evaluation determined that Han suffers from schizophrenic spectrum disorder. But some good news came out of the 10-month-old child's horrific afternoon incident, as her story gave rise to policy providing assisted outpatient treatment for persons with certain mental illnesses. As for Alexia, the little girl is happy, healthy, and a beacon of light for the community she calls home. And although she probably doesn't realize it now, her New Year's Day encounter makes her a hero. This beautiful little angel who was just out for a fun New Year's Day with her family at the mall unknowingly made the island a little safer for the rest of us.
We're just getting started with our look back at this year's top stories, so our countdown rolls on after this. But a big part of what we do is special productions, and 2015 saw our camera crews out and about more than ever, documenting the community events that make living on Guam so very special. Here now, a look back at how we captured the slice of island life. huge year because user generated content has always been a massive part of how we cover stories here on Guam but this year we had Vine, Instagram, YouTube, oh, yeah. Snapchat and everything and we got so much video. I mean this was a year where we had a lot of video of a very violent nature and on our Twitter poll that we asked just a few days ago we were asking people in 2015 what the most shocking video was and overwhelmingly people said that the most shocking video they had was that very savage video of the man caught beating dogs. And that, you know, still to this day, you watch it and everything like that, and you just cringe seeing it. And it's only going to get bigger as social media platforms continue to expand and more Guamians get online. You alluded to earlier about the power of social media. Number seven on our countdown was the, the shocking video of a fight that broke out in Harmon. Right down the street from us, literally a stone's throw away. And of minutes where, before the news got. Yeah, and, you know, we had, you know, just moments to prepare for it. And then when you and I showed it on the news, we were in shock. Yeah. As we were showing that, because I mean, I think you know, just the fact that this happened during drive time it was a very busy uh, highway. People were actually in their cars trying to get home, trying to go get dinner, um, and this fight broke out. There was a baseball bat involved. People were getting hit left and right, and child. probably punctuated. Yeah, exactly, punctuated by the fact that there was a small child who leapt out of the car and actually joined that fight. And you know, we we got that video from two or three different perspectives, over a half million views on Facebook, and that's just Facebook. We had YouTube, we had all our other Instagram, all our other social platforms, so that was a major moment in the year of 2015. We here in Harmon can remember the event well. The Rush Hour Brawl, the Intersection Road Rage, the Route 16 Riot. It was drive time on what felt like a normal Monday back in August when KUM received an anonymous video of a video clip capturing a major fight mere steps from our studios here. The ensuing video, seen more than a half million times on our Facebook page, showed an extremely disturbing fight at the four-way stop near the Bank of Guam and McDonald's where several people leapt from their vehicles, pummeling each other in between cars with one of the people wielding a baseball bat. And what's most upsetting, one of the people involved was a young child. Amazingly, the victim involved came away with only minor cuts. It took nearly two full weeks to make any arrests in the case, with five people being taken in for their involvement, two of those adults. Also guys, it was a really big year for the Catholic Church. There were a lot of protests, there was a lot of a disconnect in the Catholic community. One of the big stories was that Archbishop Anthony Ackerman was actually accused of sexually assaulting someone, by, but the victim never came forward. Um, another big story was Father Luis Camacho, who was actually arrested for having sexual relations with a 17-year-old minor. Uh, he actually took her away from school, so he was investigated by the Catholic Church. And probably one of the biggest stories was the Re Redemptor Modest Cemetery in Jonia, which is um, estimated to be worth upwards of $70 million. And so Archbishop Anthony Ampern actually uh, deeded that property to an organization affiliated with the neo catechumenal Way. So there was a lot of controversy about that. Definitely a very tumultuous year for the Catholic Church. 
another uh, big story, of course, as people just <coughs> saw, was uh, the shooting that occurred at the Higatner Precinct. And I remember, Crystal, um, you texted me, oh, they arrested him. And, oh, my gosh, it was gunfire. And you, like, totally left me, like, what? And you ran inside. I couldn't believe you did that. I think this is probably the biggest story of my, my news reporter career mm -hmm. is that what should have been a typical perp walk, you know, when they make the arrest and they take your headshot and they take your fingerprints, didn't end up that way. We were, I was there to get footage or get video of Dmitry Lobanov, a Navy man who was accused of shooting his wife in the face in their agate home just weeks prior. And all of us reporters were there, all of the other media were there, and everyone left immediately after. But I stayed in my car to take a phone call. And those few minutes I stayed in my phone call, I, I, heard, I heard a gunshot, and then I heard people running towards, I heard a lot of screaming, so I ran towards the precinct. I turned on my camera, ran towards the precinct, and I, I caught this footage that you see. And like Brie was saying, I didn't really know, what to, I started crying, and I called her, and I was still at the door, and I was like, Brie, someone just shot somebody, and it was just a moment of panic. If you see in the footage immediately after the, the report I did for the news that night, I was in tears. Uh, my cameraman Joe Tamerlo had to really shake me up. Crystal, you got this, you got this. But you know what came of that story was that we'll never know what happened to Dmitry Lobanov and his wife. What, what was the motive for him shooting her in the face in their agate home? Chances are that this past April, you came across a video that we posted online of a shooting at the Haganya precinct that we captured mere seconds after it happened. Chances are that many of your friends on Facebook shared it with you as well. Because that clip, despite being brief, was one of the most shocking moments of the past 12 months. Dmitry Lobanov, a 35-year-old Russian man in the United States Navy, was brought in by police for the murder of his wife in Agate. During the in-processing, he managed to extract an officer's gun and shoot himself in the head, taking his own life. The issue brought unwanted light on the Guam police, questioning that agency's procedures for handling prisoners and detainees. And, more to the point, how was the man able to access an officer's weapon? The officers involved were placed on administrative leave for the duration of the investigation, but with Lobanov and his wife now dead, will likely never know the motive that set off this very tragic and frightful chain of events that captivated our island community. And that part might be the most shocking of all. 2015 was a huge year for Guam sports. Our community made waves on an international level with the Matau, our men's national soccer team, hosting a series of FIFA matches against world-class competition as we sought to earn our first ever appearance in next year's World Cup. Guam celebrated big wins over Oman and India, and we cheered our boys constantly as they became stars and fought hard. And in mixed martial arts news, Pacific Extreme Combat hit a major milestone with its 50th live event, commemorating more than a decade in high quality, high impact entertainment. The women's extreme fighting scene exploded with Brogan Walker emerging as a local fan favorite. This was also a big year for repeat championships as the GW girls won yet another volleyball title under legendary coach Bobby Kanata. The Pepsi Warriors also completed the three-peat claiming another Miller Football League championship title. Weightlifting also returned in glorious form to the Guam scene as the Guam Weightlifting Federation returned after nearly a decade. Bodybuilders also made a name for Guam as they competed in the mainland and represented us by pumping iron on a world stage. And one of the most proud we had was the return to prominence of the Guam Men's National Basketball Program, which won gold in the Pacific Games for the first time in a generation, bringing home the hardware to Guam, earning respect from their regional peers, and inspiring a new crop of young athletes to work hard, stay focused, and play tough for their island home. August 31st, um, an explosion early in the morning at uh, Cabris 3 and 4 plant. Uh, apparently, what we found out later was that the explosion actually occurred at Cabris 4 unit um, and uh, the fire spread to Cabris 3, so both of the, uh, the units were damaged. Um, 
as of this date, I'm still haven't figured out exactly what happened. Um, they still need to get, get into the actual equipment to find that out. Um, of course, that sparked um, you know all the speculation about um, the vulnerability of the Anawai power system and the need for load shedding. Uh, must give GPA credit; they have managed managed that very well. There's only been a, a single-digit percentage of um, a rolling power outage since the August 31st explosion. So, uh, but they have been in a real uh, recovery mode, um, trying to add more capacity. Uh, just recently, they. Um, uh, putting up a uh, temporary generation of the GEGO substation. So they are trying to uh, marshal as much uh, generation capacity as possible to prevent low shedding, even to the extent of calling on big power users to kick on their own generators when you know the, the heat demand gets too high so that they, they aren't able to, to meet it. So yeah, the load shedding blues uh, are back, but only to a certain extent. Not, not the way it was 20 years ago. <laughs>
towards the grandmother's property. So again, we're going to, I think this is going to be the biggest story, if not for 2016. So let's see how that trial unfolds. Again, murder, manslaughter, and aggravated assault. When the terrible news came that a cop had died, apparently at the hands of a fellow policeman, the entire island erupted in outrage. A frantic officer, Bert Piolo, had placed a call to 911, saying that he'd been shot and he was with fellow officer Mark Torrey Jr. Piolo's mortal wounds would sadly claim his life, setting off a series of events that would rock the Guam Police Department and divide the supporters of these two young men who swore their lives in the service of their beloved island. A series of Justice for Burt rallies were held along Marine Corps Drive, publicly crying for vindication of the loss many knew as a devout friend, consummate jokester, passionate musician, and loyal family member. The matter remains in court with the trial expected in 2016, and Guam anxiously awaits to learn the story about what happened between two brothers in uniform that left one dead. Our number one story is coming up, but first, giving back to charities is a big part for all of our cast members here at Team KUAM, and being a responsible corporate citizen is extremely important to each and every one of us. So here's just some of the many ways the KUAM Care Force got involved with our community in 2015. Okay, we're going to get to our number one story of the year, but first let's take a look back at the, the, the list. Number 10 was record of decision signed for the military buildup. Number 9, repeal of Gap Guam pay raises. Number 8 was Yu Huo Huan, who uh, punched a baby at the mall on New Year's Day. Uh, the straight out of Harmon story where the group of people got out of the cars and started rumbling in the streets. Uh, number six was the controversies in the Catholic Church. Number five was uh, the Russian that shot himself at the Agatnya precinct. Number four, the return of the load shedding blues. Uh, number three, medicinal marijuana legalized on Guam. Number two, Officer Bert Piolo killed by a fellow officer. And number one story of the year was same-sex marriage legalized on Guam. Overwhelmingly, the issue of 2015 was the legalization of same-sex marriage because of the national implications. And with Guam being where America's day begins, the island's own enactment of the right for gay and lesbian couples to legally wed had the entire country watching as we were the first U.S. territory to have gay marriage made legal and ultimately applauding with cheers of support echoed from the tip of Jigo all the way to Umatic Bay. The law and public support prevailed over pushback from clergy, culminating a historic Pride Month celebration, not just for same-sex couples, but for the bisexual and transgender community as well. And fittingly, on a paradise island where nature treats us to natural rainbows, people across the world 
openly voice their support for the rights of all people to marry whomever they choose. People saw the legalization of same-sex marriage not as a thing relegated to a subculture of the island's population, but as a freedom extended to all members of the Guam community. It was a long and tireless fight for love that got society to this point, and in the end, it was love that prevailed. This story had such a huge impact on society because the entire nation was literally watching Guam to see how we handled it um, when the law was passed locally. There was the massive movement on social media, everybody you know, changing their avatars in support of same-sex civil union. So I mean, it was a huge, huge story that affected pretty much everybody on Guam and in the country. It was interesting because I did a story uh, before the law was passed with this transgender woman and she was actually in a relationship so once the law was passed she sent me a message and to let me know that she was able to finally get married here in Guam. All right. And I think for, for the most part, I think once it was passed, um, we did a couple stories of the first couples, same-sex couples going in to apply for their marriage license and how happy they were and they even had um, the couple that kind of jump started this all, you know, be their, you know, the witnesses to their civil ceremony. So I think that was a great, you know, how everyone just kind of came together once it once it was passed. In contrast, though, at the Catholic Church, they had a big response to the same-sex ruling because if you went to church immediately after, they had they were praying for you know pray that you against it. So again, more controversies out of the church. And I interviewed a Bill Pesci, he's an attorney, he's one of the biggest supporters of this, and him and his partner, Corman, they've been together for over 10 years and they never thought they would see this in their lifetime. And I went to a pride party over the summer for research purposes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they, uh, you could see the joy not only in their eyes, but everyone who was in attendance, because it was during pride month, so like during the summertime. So um, a lot of people were celebrating, had a lot to celebrate this year. You know, I was actually off island. I was on vacation uh, when the US Supreme Court ruling came down. But what was interesting is the fact that while I was watching TV and I was watching all the headlines come through, there was actually a picture um, of Caleb. Yeah. It was really neat. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I'm here in Oklahoma and I'm looking at you know, what's happening on Guam. It's, it's interesting that Guam was once again the, at the forefront of this mm -hmm. national issue. And uh, it, it, it's just uh, interesting that uh, an island that is predominantly Catholic and has been for centuries um, is. Um, you know, embracing um, the same-sex marriage, and so yeah, I just thought that was very interesting. Love wins. Yeah. And it was great to see everyone's Facebook pro profile pictures yeah. with the rainbow and everything. <laughs> that was good.